Welcome back to BSA by Design, a podcast about transforming healthcare, educational, and research facilities through expert design and insight. I'm your host, Brian Moore. Thanks again for joining us. In this episode, I'm joined by Eric Bashore and Lauren Murphy to talk about the ins and outs of working at BSA and what makes BSA such a unique working experience. So far in the podcast, we've talked a lot about what we do and our different practices at BSA. But before future episodes go deeper into our project stories and disciplines, let's take a look at what working at BSA is like. First, let me introduce our guests. Erica Bashore is the Director of Human Resources at BSA and has been with BSA since December of 2019. She has a bachelor's degree in business administration and has spent 17 years working in HR with a heavy focus in recruitment and employee engagement. She has earned PHR, SHRM-CP, and Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt certifications. Lauren Murphy is a human resources generalist at BSA and graduated from IUPUI with a bachelor's degree in organizational leadership and HR management certification. Prior to joining BSA in 2019, she worked as an HR specialist. She also earned her SHRM-CP certification. Well, thanks for joining me on the show, both of you. Um, I always like to start off by asking guests on the podcast what made them get into their profession. So I'll ask both of you, and uh, Erica, you can start first. What got you interested in human resources? Well, first, I want to thank you so much for asking both Lauren and I to join you today. This is really exciting to be able to share a little bit more about why we love working at BSA. And um, we both, of course, work in human resources. And for me, I actually went to school For a semester, thinking I was going to get into IT, I don't know why that. I cannot (laughs) see you doing that at all, right? (laughs) I don't know why. I think that was the thing. You know, this is the this is around 2000, and that was that was the trend. Um, So I quickly realized that that was not field I wanted to get into, and realized I want to be around people. So pursuing business originally, and then not liking the accounting classes, I decided to pivot and focus on human resources. And it's been an incredibly rewarding and fulfilling career. Well, we're all very fortunate you did not go into IT because you're very well suited for the role that you're in. <laughs> Lauren, how about you? My journey follows a very similar story. I actually started my college education progressing towards elementary education and decided that I wanted to still work with people, but maybe focus that a little bit more in the business setting. So I chose human resources for the collaboration, the teamwork, the solving problems, all of the things that come with HRs are things that I'm really truly passionate about. So very fortunate to have found this career and to have found BSA. Excellent. Well, let's, um, Let's pull back the curtain about what it's like to work here. That's obviously the the point of having you guys both on the podcast. And you've both been here about five years. So what makes BSA such a special place to work? So this is really cliche, but it's the people. The people, I really feel like it starts at the top. And I look at our leadership team and they are phenomenal people. They are leading us down a path of growth and they want to see and push each of us to be the best that we can be professionally. So for me, it's been refreshing to work at a place where I feel like I'm pushed to continue to learn and grow and develop. And I see that across every role within the firm. Another thing that is very important to BSA and something that I think really sets us apart is that we are 100% employee owned. We haven't always been. Um, We made this shift in 2017 and it has changed the culture of our firm. It has given us this entrepreneurial spirit. This is giving us a opportunity for all of us to think and act like business owners. We make decisions that can impact the bottom line and we make decisions that are as though we own the business. Do you have additional thoughts, Lauren? 
Yeah, for me, it's really the investment we put into our people. And like Erica mentioned, this is really leadership that kind of guides that and supports that. One of our core values is is we are learners. So they are are encouraging growth and expertise, which helps our teams to really see a long-term career path with the firm. The firm invests in our employees on the professional side by supporting through the licensure process, as well as allowing employees to pursue certifications that they may be passionate about or other credentials that are relevant that could help them become further experts in what they are working on or the projects or with our clients. On the personal side, we're able to come together as a firm once a year at our all-employee conference called Engage. So the firm invests in us by giving us opportunity to see our fellow employee owners from across the country and build meaningful, impactful relationships that just translates to, to better work that we're producing, better teams for projects, and just overall a better culture. You mentioned a minute ago supporting some of the professional side, um, and we also have some programs internally, or actually the employee development program that funnels a couple of different. Eric, can you share a few things about those different channels of the employee development program? Sure. One of the other things that I think has really been impactful to our culture is a culture of continuous improvement. I mentioned the leadership team earlier, but I think they really drive this, that We need to be continuously improving, be the best that we can be as a firm. And so some of these programs are things that maybe we've done in the past and we've just needed a little refresh on them or we've gone through and and rolled out some new programs. So um, we do have a principal development program that allows a really structured path for someone to move into a principal role, Mm -hmm. which is something that a number of our employees envision and see themselves growing into. So we have laid the groundwork for them to get the mentoring and the additional training that they would need to be successful in that role. We also have a mentoring program. So this is really important in this industry, but something that BSA really invests in is making sure that staff at all level have an opportunity to be a part of a mentorship program. Maybe you're mentoring someone or someone is mentoring you, but it it happens throughout the life cycle of the employee, their time with us. We also have an expertise development program. We also have a leadership development program. And this is something that is a small select group of individuals that are identified to go through this program annually and they learn more about the business. They learn more about how the business runs. They learn more about how they can develop as leaders. And it's fun to think that, you know, we have our future generation of leaders sitting next right. to us and, and working with us on a regular basis. We've also got six studios across the country in Austin, Denver, Raleigh, St. Louis, Tampa, and then, of course, here in Indianapolis, where we are. How does BSA work to ensure that there's an overlying firm culture while also allowing those regional touches to build local studio culture? I'd be happy to take that one, but maybe Lauren can piggyback off of some of this as well. So one of the things that was rolled out uh, right after I started here at BSA was something that we refer to as one BSA. And this is this is our term that we use, yeah. but it's fun to see it in action. Um, instead of having each individual studio operate kind of in a silo, we have an opportunity to kind of mold together as one firm. And it's been wonderful from a culture standpoint to feel that we're all I hate to say in this together, but that's the culture that we've really built. So we share staff among studios. So if there's times where, you know, we have a big project in one of our studios, we might bring staff from another to come alongside them and and work on that project so that we can put out the best work that we possibly can. Another thing that is, I think, really makes BSA unique is our transparency so there's really a couple of different things that we do as a, as a firm to support this and promote this. One of the things that I think is important for our employee ownership culture is that we share our financials every month. Our CFO puts that information out to all of our employee owners so they can really track along and see how we're doing as a firm overall. We also, and I believe our former chairman, 
Kevin Token is the one that implemented this, but he started this during the pandemic. We call it the Pulse, and it's a weekly, a short 10 minutes or less weekly video that is sent out to all of our employees. It comes from someone on our leadership team. So it rotates out who who makes that weekly recording, but it talks about some of our big wins that we've had. Um, It might talk about who we have joining the firm. We celebrate, you know, we can give some public recognition in that, that pulse, but it really allows all of us to know and hear what's happening across all of our studios. I think another thing to kind of add is each of our studios has a regional leadership team, but we have with that one BSA model, we have that support from national leadership. So our leadership group travels to each studio throughout the year to spend time with our team members and their individual studio leaderships while discussing what's working and what's not working. They gain insight and feedback from all of the employees in the studio to really hear, you know, what what changes do we need to make? What's working really well? What what can we keep? And with that always comes a fun event. I think Brian, you've been yeah. to a couple of the fun <laughs> events, but yep. they always plan something so that you know, we have a business side of, of working with the leadership team, but also a personal side where they can grow and really develop those relationships with our employee owners throughout the farm. Yeah, that's something that's been interesting even since I've been here and joining the leadership team. All of our leadership team is also not in one location. Um, and as you alluded to a little while ago, we, we don't have these siloed offices in the corner and they never come out of them. You know, we're out, we're, we're working with local leadership at each studio. And like you said, doing fun things to try to, uh, I heard some people were uh, maybe riding mechanical bulls in Austin. And we've, you know, we've, we've had a lot of different fun events, bowling and things like that to try to build some camaraderie across studios with, with the leadership team. So let's talk about BSA's commitment to our communities. What kind of involvement do we have in our different regions across the firm? I would say giving back is really a part of, of, our DNA, it's what we live and breathe. And, and part of our mission is to create inspired solutions that improve lives. And I think that that really embeds in our, our communities that we live and work and play. We have several different initiatives to support and encourage our employees to be involved in our communities. Our employees may use eight hours per quarter of BSA time to engage with industry specific DEI organizations. Also, each of our studios coordinates at least two BSA-sponsored group volunteer opportunities per year. This lets our employees really get out of the office and, and have an impact, a direct impact on the communities in which we live and work. Additionally, we have a giving back program that's designed for employees that fulfill 20 or more volunteer hours to an organization of their choice. We will donate $500 to that organization where volunteer hours have been fulfilled by the employees. So giving back to what our employees are passionate about in our communities is really important to us as well. I want to talk a little bit about our studios Uh, again. I know neither of you are architects or interior designers. I'm certainly not either. They wouldn't want me anywhere near a drawing board, but can you share a little more broadly about the way our studios are set up in terms of the layout? Sure. So being a design firm, I think it's really important that we are ourselves working in spaces that are inspiring, that are state of the art, that are setting a really high standard of workspace. And we also need to collaborate in this industry. And we need an opportunity to come together to solve complex problems and be creative. So this, our space is designed in a way where we have a lot of open space, a lot of natural lighting. Staff can find little pockets to meet in. We have small projects room. We also use Zoom technology and we have technology available in all of our studios to make sure that we stay connected across across each of our studios. Um, I'd also like to note that we've just recently redesigned our Austin and St. Louis studios. I haven't had an opportunity to, to visit either of them yet, but I've seen the pictures and they're impressive. They are impressive. I'm having been there just in the last few months, they're great. And I know we're also working on the Indianapolis studio, hopefully moving what near the end of this year. So yes. that that's exciting as well. It is. I can't wait to see what the space looks like. On the fun side of things, Lauren, can you share what you've seen some of our employer owners doing that keep things light in the office? 
Yeah, absolutely. All of our studios, while they, you know, embody BSA's culture overall, they also have their own vibe to them, which makes them really unique. We use things like Workplace, which is like Facebook for work. And the posts people put up are great. They really showcase our, our project work, but also what people are doing for fun. Yeah. So surprise baby showers get posted on there. People are getting together for lunch. And then there's also our annual gingerbread competition where our studios compete against each other to recreate our projects and everything they use has to be edible. So as you can imagine with a, a firm of architects, engineers, and interior designers, those competitions get pretty competitive. Right, right. <laughs> and last week even I saw Raleigh Studio celebrate some project wins with an impromptu happy hour and snacks. So we really do try to keep our employees engaged by having fun things. You know, we, we like to say that we work hard, but we also want to reward our employees and, and have fun too while we do it. We were in Austin when they were doing their gingerbread house and it had glass. And you're like, well, that has to be plastic. They're like, nope, that is crystallized sugar and it is edible. And they ended up winning, of wow. course. Yes. So. <laughs> We're coming up on college graduations and looking to fill a number of roles. What are some of the things that we're looking for in terms of career resume and maybe the character of the candidates that want to join BSA? I think we probably both can add a little yeah, to that. That'd be um, great. I think probably the most important thing when we look and think about our recruiting is that we are finding alignment with our core values. Lauren had mentioned earlier one of them, that we are learners, but our four other core values are we are partners, we are purposeful, we are owners, and we are ideal team players. And these really, we feel that these really shape the culture and they shape who BSA is. So it's important that we find alignment with the candidates that we're bringing on board. I would also say, you know, a student that's studying architecture, engineering, or interior design and in with a, a true interest in working on complex projects in the healing, learning, and discovery market sectors. You may have heard prior podcasts of digging into what healing, learning, and discovery mean to BSA. And if you haven't, I encourage you to Go listen check to them those. Out, right? yeah. <laughs> um, but those are those are our core markets and, and where we really serve our clients. And, and they are complex projects, great opportunities to, to really build your, your resume and your portfolio as you move through school. And then a desire to work on projects that impact our community. So as we mentioned earlier, it's, it's in our DNA. It's important um, that we give back to the communities that we work in. So having that desire to work on those projects is important too. Thank you for giving an overview of what it's like to work at BSA and some of the things that differentiate us maybe from, from other firms out there. This has been great and hopefully I'll have you back on again soon. Sure. And if I could just give a plug to check out our website and go to the yes. careers page to learn a little bit more about some of our other benefits and um, if interested to apply for a position. with us. Thanks to Erica and Lauren for joining us on this episode of BSA by Design. If you're interested in learning more about BSA Life Structures or as Erica mentioned, if you'd like to apply for a position with the firm or see what's available, please visit our careers page on our website, bsalifestructures.com. There's also a link in the show notes to contact us for more information. Be sure to subscribe to BSA by Design wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss an episode. And we've got more content and stories to share through various platforms. So be sure to follow us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and X. That's going to do it for this episode. Join us again next time on BSA by Design. <laughs>